Hey everybody, Dave here. How are y'all doing tonight? And as always, I've got Greg the Badger Piper with me on some side of the screen. Opposite maybe of what I'm pointing. Yeah, it is. I can never get it right. Ever. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Well, I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling a little uh, a little off, you know. It's almost like I had this whole conversation in my head about you know stealing from only from pirates and you know you know, making sure that you uh, keep an eye on your ship when you're fighting because you might miss it sailing off. I, I thought I thought something like that was going down, but apparently not. I, I I don't know. Maybe it was just a parallel world, and I. I know what it was. It was it was Barry Allen. He ran in back in time again, and uh, he you know did a flashpoint. That's what it was. I'm just having I'm just vibing you know, a different a different universe. Yeah, I think I just came from a universe where uh, there was a gas crisis going on in the country. So I, I'm really glad that I got escaped that uh, horrible nightmare. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, and, and, and there was a pandemic too, and, and that's all all taken care of. That's all done. Like there, there's no no such thing. We're all we're all just normal. Thank goodness. So, what are you smoking tonight, Greg? Uh, tonight, uh, I am smoking um, some uh, Cornell and Deal's uh, Morley's Best in uh, this. Uh, uh, Apple Diplomat Cobb here. How about yourself? Well, I'm finishing off a, a little bit of uh, Luxury Bullseye Flake in uh, this little brandy straight pipe that I got from the Country Squire. And I used the fold stuff method in on it, and it, it's been going for a while. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's funny, like, uh, in that other universe, uh, when we recorded a podcast, uh, I had a brandy pipe as well that I was smoking, and, like, we were in sync, and it was perfect and wonderful and great, and, uh... And so much for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Barry Allen. Good thing I didn't name any of my boys Barry because then if they were up and would heard that, what did I do now, Dad? What? No. It's not my fault. So tonight we're going to go with a, uh, a pipe-centric episode, sort of, in a roundabout way. We, we talk about fictional characters all the time. And uh, we're going to go with uh, almost a staple Country Squire radio episode. We're going to talk about fictional pipe smokers. And more about, uh, are just the ones that appeal to us. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I'll be honest, I, I don't know of that many fictional pipe smokers. You know, I, I know of uh, Sherlock Holmes. Who doesn't know of, of the great detective's love for the pipe? It's, it's just well known. It's, it's what it is. But I only know about him and one other guy. And I'll be honest, I only found out about the other guy today. Well, 12th of May recording time. Yeah. Well, for me, I just, I've always had this uh, kind of like really good memory of uh, people that, uh, you know, since growing up of, uh, you know, pipe smokers and shows and, and movies that I would watch and, uh, because they always appealed to me. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't have like the, the largest, uh, you know, encyclopedia of, of these characters, but uh, they certainly, as soon as they show up, uh, you know, they uh, stick in my mind. So I'm, I'm going to go with one. I'm not going to start with the obvious because I already mentioned him. But and I'm not going to go with the, uh, with the with the other one I mentioned either, the one I, I didn't name yet. I, I, th I thought of another pipe smoking character. 
that I that I saw in a in a TV show. It, it just struck me when we were talking about it. There was an episode of the Star Trek Voyager where Captain Janeway and Tuvok went into the Q continuum with Q and Q. The basic premise behind the episode was one Q wanted to his Im immortality taken away so he could commit suicide and die. And the John Delancey Q that we're all familiar with was arguing the other side of that. And in order to, uh, you know, demonstrate some things, they had to go into the continuum. And there were two or three other Q just, you know, playing games, reading books and such and, and whatnot. And the one, uh, the one Q was sitting on a, on a porch reading a book called The Old. And uh, he was smoking a corncob pipe. Hmm. And he, you know, it, it was it was kind of a juxtaposition is why it stuck with me, and I, I just remembered it because you got this old guy sitting on uh, sitting on a porch in another dimension, smoking what looked to be an old Dominion corncob pipe, or even possibly a Missouri Meerschaum corncob pipe. So, seeing that on Star Trek, while not the most influential fictional character, it just shows pipe smoking. In the future, yes, we have. And actually, I, I believe uh, there is an episode where uh, um, Data and Jordy are kind of do like a, uh, you know, pretend to be that uh, character that you'll be bringing up later um, as a detective, and uh, uh, Data, of course, is that is that detective. And uh, during the conversation, he uh, brings out a calabash and uh, smokes it. I was going to bring that up myself, actually. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I... Uh, That's actually what I thought was possibly going to be brought up uh, when, when Star Trek was mentioned. So, uh, you know, at least it got uh, mentioned. What about you? I, so I've, I mentioned my nameless Q smoking a pipe in the, the 23rd century in the Delta Quadrant. What's your first one? Who do you want to mention first? Yeah. Um, and it's funny too that you mentioned Star Trek because I'm I'm trying to think and when it comes to sci-fi you don't really see a whole lot of pipe smokers and like you know, futuristic you know no, sci-fi no, kind of things. It's a it's an unusual situation that uh, having a pipe smoker in, uh, in 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 you know like like you said there's Data there's the nameless Q there's. A holodeck character in an earlier episode of the next generation or a later episode of the next generation that is in an old west town so corncob pipe shows up and that one from what i could see is a missouri meerschaum because it looked like a, it looked like it was a, a legend corncob pipe mm. i've got a few of those and i've modified a few of those so i'm very familiar with the shape yeah and uh, there that was uh, one where wharf was playing a sheriff in a in a holodeck program with his son Alexander. So this guy was just on the on on the porch smoking a pipe while a gunfight was going down. As and, you do, uh, yeah, as you do. You just... Nope, here's the shootout. Nope, here's the shootout. Time to there's the entertainment for the month. But yeah. um... Yeah, I think uh, you know. Other than you know, maybe stuff from like uh, the fifties or like forties or fifties, like when it depicts uh, people in space, you might uh, find some of that. But uh, yeah, not not so much of the modern stuff. Um, let's see. The first character that I, I would think of uh, when it comes to all that is that uh, you know, there's a lot of. Uh, pipe smokers in uh, uh, cartoons, uh, especially ones from like the, the 60s and such, like uh, 
Um, I, I'm thinking of things like, uh, you know, like Rocky and Bullwinkle. There's a lot of uh, characters that will pop up with a pipe. Um, there's um, uh, a Mr. Peabody, uh, the the dog, the genius dog, on a. Uh, um, that has like the the history segments on uh, the Rocky and Bullwinkle show uh, for Peabody and Sherman. He'd often kind of start episodes wearing uh, a smoking robe and having a pipe uh, before uh, going on some sort of a adventure with his boy Sherman. Um, but the character that I'm really thinking of, I. I can't. I think he was a character on the Underdog Show, where had a, his own segment. But uh, it's Commander McBrag, and uh, he was this uh, old stuffy British uh, gentleman at uh, some sort of like uh, gentleman's club uh, over in the UK, and uh, he always uh, every episode. Uh, he would barge into a conversation at, at the club and have his pipe with him and uh, talk about some sort of uh, how he met some sort of person in history or accomplished some sort of uh, thing in history that obviously, of course, isn't true or anything. It's just more to get the kids familiar with like uh, the, the story or whatever. Um, but uh, he always had a pipe with him and with... Uh, uh, I remember specifically too there was a time when he took on the black knight and after besting uh the black knight and knocking him on the ground uh and knocking his helmet off uh the commander dispatched him with a quick uh blow to the head using the bowl of his pipe with a quick tap and that put him out wow that must have been some pipe mm-hmm must have been very similar to the one that you mentioned uh, in that other universe that was big enough to hold six or seven coins of uh, luxury bullseye flake. That's about the only that pipe that I could figure something that size that would you know, would do that, especially if it's briar pipe. Absolutely. Okay, so now now to an actual serious one, and the one that I discovered today. Wife and the kids were out. Uh, they went to the park, get some exercise for the kids, and you know get them out because they're going a little stir crazy with all the restrictions and stuff that are still happening here in Ontario due to the COVID thing. And uh, when they came home, uh, in order to uh, keep them entertained and whatnot, while I was making supper she put on 101 Dalmatians. And as I was starting to get things ready, I noticed that Roger, the musician of the the pair, smokes a pipe. He was smoking a billiard-shaped pipe throughout the the movie on various occasions. And something that Disney would definitely never put in their films now. But... uh, you had uh, the music- musician smoking a pipe and the villain smoking a cigarette in one of those big old long holder thingies. Yes. Yeah, he's uh, probably the best example of a Disney pipe smoker. Um, and really, like, it's very much a part of his character. Uh, strongly. And actually, yeah, like, I would say he's probably one of the best examples of them. And he... Uh, it's not something casual either. Like he's it very much as a prop for him, mm-hmm. and uh, like I'm thinking especially of like when the uh, puppies are born that you know he's you know nervously puffing on his pipe and uh, <clears throat> the, you know, there's that and just uh, you know very much uh, you know it's very rare to find him without it in the scene. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, because there's that one. The puppies are born, and whenever Cruella's around in, in their home, he's just puffing.
something like a like a chimney on that thing. Mm -hmm. If it was a real pipe, after she was gone, I'm sure if you picked that up, you'd burn your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Do you who else do you got? We got so we got we got a couple of nameless people in Star Trek plus Data, and we've got uh, Roger from Hundred and One Dalmatians. Um, your your Colonel yeah, or Captain Bragg. Bragg. <clears throat> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the interesting thing is there's a lot of like minor characters that are usually seen with a pipe. Mm. Uh, and uh, usually the, these are characters like, you know, it's like the fatherly type or uh, grandfatherly or like uh, some like a commander or a, you know someone in charge of something like uh, I'm thinking in, like Inspector Gadget uh, the um, his uh, Inspector Gadget's boss always had a pipe um, uh, but uh, for my next choice I will uh, say that uh, um Hmm. trying to avoid like some of the obvious ones but um uh you know i, I think i'll go with uh, actually you know, you know comics you know especially in the 40s and 50s and even into the 60s a bit there were a lot of uh pipe smokers you know you had like your reed richards and uh uh, uh, really a lot of other characters Bruce Banner uh, but uh, my personal Gordon. favorite was uh, uh, Steve Rogers uh, Captain America that should have been in the MCU when, mm -hmm. when, when old man Steve came back at the end of, end of uh, Endgame to give the shield over to uh, to uh, Oh crap! What's his name? Falcon. Falcon. That's right. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Haven't watched it yet, but that's the guy. Um, he should have been sitting there puffing on a pipe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I um, because I I enjoyed going back to, and looking at old comics, especially from like the, you know, the forties and the fifties and everything, and. Yeah, like uh, Captain America, he is always, uh, when in, in his civilian form, you know, he always has a pipe with him and everything. And uh, really, it fits his character, too. You know, the, you know, strong jawed, uh, uh, you know, built like a truck, uh, you know, soldier. It, it just, it fit his, his character. And uh, I, I really uh, like that about him. And it really, like, added to his kind of like toughness and uh but uh not like in a uh you know like it was like a confidence a confident kind of strength so uh he he's one character that i definitely uh uh look to and admire that's a you know pipe smoker and of course you know that that kind of went away by the end of the 60s but still you know it was a, a cool aspect of his character that I liked. Oh, absolutely. Another one that I, I, I just came up with, and I, I should have known it, or should have realized it before. Just should have remembered. It, it's been a while since I've, I've watched any of the uh, um, Hobbit movies and uh, the Lord of the Rings series, but I just started listening on Audible to uh, Fellowship of the Ring. And many times, characters in that story are mentioned with their pipes. We've got uh, Gandalf. He's always got a pipe handy, smoking his pipe. He's blowing smoke rings that turn different colors. Bilbo Baggins smoked a pipe. The dwarves all smoked pipes. It's almost easier to name characters that didn't smoke a pipe. Like I don't think the elves did any of them, at least in the movies. No, you never you never see Legolas with a pipe. 
even well, I can't say um, in the stories because I haven't got to him yet. I'm only on chapter two of Lord. I don't recall him with one. Yeah, uh, but like I said, I can't say for sure because, like I said, I'm I'm only on chapter two of uh, the first book. Aragorn, he usually has one. Um, not Boromir. Um, yeah, uh, definitely dwarves and, and definitely hobbits usually have a pipe on them, and, and Gandalf does as well. Interesting little fact that I learned from Brian Levine. Um, the pipe tobacco that was smoked during most of those movies was provided by um, shoot, which company was it? Was it Lane? Oh. Yeah, I think it was Lane. I think it's uh, Lane's uh, nougat is what they were smoking. That was provided by Lane for them to smoke. It was Stockaby. No, I think it's Stockaby. Maybe it was Stockaby. Yeah. No, you're right. It was Stockaby's nougat. That's it. That came up during uh, one of the uh, this pipe lifes Brian was on. Mm-hmm. So a certain. Uh, he also mentioned uh, a certain uh, actor that played one of the hobbits. Uh, uh, after the movie was done, had picked some more up for himself mm -hmm. uh, at one point. But I'll uh, I'll keep that one uh, the name more uh, anonymous. Yep. That's so really cool. Um, but but just to keep in the in the fantasy vein for a moment, um, I recently just finished going through uh, a more modern uh, uh, series um, written by Christopher Paolini, uh, Aragon, uh, the Inheritance Cycle, and in his stories that he that he's written, um, more than one main character uh, also smoked pipes. Um, Brom, uh, one of the first characters you're introduced to, is an old storyteller in Carvajal. He's smoking uh, a uh, tobacco substitute like uh, substance in his pipe on many occasions. He, even in one of the stories written after that, there's a, an anthology of three short stories that came out uh, a couple of years back that I have. And. Um, it's after the inheritance cycles over and Aragon's establishing the new academy for the new dragon riders um, he's growing the particular uh, I can't remember the name it's some it, it's very similar to like hobbit weed but it doesn't it's not mm -hmm. hobbit in front of it it's it's like that though that's the the style he went with a kind of weed that uh, he's growing for the dwarves and the humans and all the people who smoke and to keep some on hand for the people who come to the academy uh, making deliveries from all the nations and whatnot. So, there you go. More pipes. I'm aware of more pipe smokers in fiction than I thought. There we go. But it all seems to be like in in fantasy. It, a lot of it, aside from going into like the the 40s and stuff of the comics, a lot of it seems to be in uh, um in fantasy where, where the where the pipes come in. Lord of the Rings. Inheritance mm -hmm. cycle, things like that. In Harry Potter too, um, you have. Um, you know, it's not very common, but um, one of the uh, more significant characters uh, that's, uh, you know, an inter. Normally, it's good characters that are usually depicted with pipes, actually. And with this one, he's kind of on the side of good, but he's also also on the side of for himself. That's. Um, uh, Mund Mundungus uh, Mundungus Fletcher. Fletcher. He had a pipe? I don't remember that. Yeah, um, yeah, and actually his name uh, translated to uh, Stinky Tobacco. Uh, that's uh, what J.K. Rowling said. But uh, yeah, he was uh, uh, depicted with a pipe. I'll have to pay more attention to that when next time I, I, I get to to uh, go through those books 
and uh, yeah. I'll have to pay more attention see if I can find that. So I, I've yeah, never, I, I don't remember it. Yeah, it's definitely mentioned, I think, in his introduction, um, but uh, it's with him periodically uh, when he's in the story. Uh, of course, he's not like a huge part of the story, but he is part of the Order of the Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Fun character, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, so who else do we have? Uh, well, in the Narnia stories, uh, you know, of course, C.S. Lewis was a, a big pipe guy. And, uh, of course, they would uh, happen to be in um, the Narnia books. Uh, uh, Mr. Beaver smoked a pipe. Uh, I mean, there was, a, there was only one real mention of it, but... Uh, he was uh, depicted with that um, uh, in the movie and cartoon uh, 70s I think 70s or 80s cartoon that I saw um, um, Professor Diggory Kirk smoked a pipe and he was based off of a uh, teacher a professor that uh, C.S. Lewis studied under that was a, a Scotsman that uh, smoked a pipe hmm and uh, um, there was also uh, Puddle Glum, who is, uh, I'm trying to think of what his race was, uh, kind of gnomish or, or he was, I don't believe he was a dwarf, but uh, very interesting kind of like earthy character. And he smoked a pipe and uh, his, uh, the smoke from that uh, was so heavy that uh, it, tended to it went the smoke wouldn't fly up in the air as pipe smoke usually does but immediately sink towards the ground hmm. which I thought was a interesting little uh, character touch there um, uh, the dwarf characters usually were depicted with pipes uh, so that's uh, those are those characters that I can think of off of uh, the top of my head um and another character, um, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the graphic novel series, uh, the Mouse Guard series, and uh, which is a great uh, series that uh, doesn't get too many releases, but has excellent art. It's all done by a man by the name of David Peterson, who uh, works in, uh, who lives in uh, Michigan. Um, but it's this medieval kind of uh, mouse world. Uh, highly, highly recommend everyone check that out. But uh, there's a character in there, uh, and I, it's funny because, like, I rem- the first time I, I had seen this uh, series, it was the first collected graphic novel, and I was walking through a Borders or Barnes and Noble, and I was just passing through the graphic novel area. I had never heard of this series, but it was like propped up on a table. And I was like, oh man, like the art, like it, it really gives like a kind of like a Calvin and Hobbes uh, in color, kind of watercolor kind of look to it. Uh, but there's a character by the name of uh, Kelena, uh, the Black Axe. Um, and, and like when I passed, I was like, oh, I should check that out. I just had like a feeling from looking at it that I would find a character with a pipe. Um, you know, there's no sort of nothing obvious that I would, but I just kind mm-hmm. of picked it up and, and sure enough, uh, when the character is introduced, uh, he's, you know, he's this old mouse character and, uh, but really tough and hardened and, uh, he's interrogating at first the two characters cause he thinks that they could possibly be bad, you know, you know, villains and, uh, he is uh, smoking a pipe, and uh, yeah, throughout his time in the series, he's out, usually has a is smoking his pipe, and uh, really cool because like he's just like one of the best characters in the series, and uh, one definitely one of my favorites. Uh, just a really awesome character. Uh, if there was one character that I was going to say, like, get a tattoo of, it would be him. 
because he is mm-hmm. just a uh, cool style to him. And of course, best for last, Sherlock Holmes, the yes. pipe smoking detective that, as we mentioned out, off the top, gets imitated throughout past, present, and future. Yes. And not only that, but also uh, different characters. Anytime you see a character um, impersonate Sherlock or do uh, or is based off of Sherlock, usually they're depicted with a pipe. Um, like I'm thinking of like Basil from like the mm-hmm. Greenhouse Detective. Mm-hmm. He has a pipe. Um, I was watching an episode of DuckTales and uh, there was uh, uh, from the classic series from right. the 80s and there was an episode where um, uh, Scrooge McDuck kind of was uh, inflicted with some sort of uh, uh, affliction that would turn him kind of he would kind of go Dr. Jekyll Mr. Hyde except the Mr. Hyde part would uh, he would just wildly uh, throw away all of his money and, yeah yeah and yeah everything. Uh, but uh, they required uh, uh, the, the, so the nephews needed to find somebody and there was someone that was a, they went to see someone that uh, one of them knew about that was an honorary woodchuck member, junior woodchuck member and that was their uh, universe's version of Sherlock Holmes and uh, who was, you know, in the vein of like someone that looked so- somewhat like Goofy but didn't act like Goofy at all but uh, he actually smoked a pipe in the cartoon, and uh, which, which is interesting too, because uh, like that was right around the edge of like when that stuff was kind of getting phased out. Yeah, and uh, and even in the cartoon, uh, one of them says that you shouldn't smoke, and uh, Sherlock just uh, kind of casually brushes him off and laughs. Uh, but uh, no, and he's uh, pretty great in that episode too. And of course, uh, too, I should mention that uh, not necessarily in the cartoons or anything, but in the classic comics, uh, Sherlock, uh, Scrooge McDuck smoked a pipe. As did Donald uh, in some of the earlier cartoons. Yes, this episode learned all the secrets Disney doesn't want you to know about pipe smoking in their, <laughs> in their IP. Yeah. Same with Marvel. Oh, just thought of uh, one sci-fi, uh, the Ewoks. <laughs> that was one Ewok. I laugh there because that's still a uh, hotly contested episode on Country Squire Radio, the Ewok episode. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? I will. I'll gladly take uh, support the Ewoks uh, with that. Uh, of all the controversial things in uh, Star Wars, I don't mind being on the side of uh, the Ewoks in that uh, whole uh, discussion. No, of course not. Just the Ewoks are just great. Yeah, I mean, how could you not like murderous teddy bears? <laughs> there was, um, which reminds me of, there was a, a theory that I, one of my other YouTubers that I would listen to when they were trying to figure out things that would happen in episode nine, there was speculation that uh, part of the movie would take place on Endor. And uh, as like a, a fun theory, oh, it was Red Letter Media. They were joking that... Uh, uh, Ray and uh, the characters would stumble upon uh, a murderous group of uh, cannibalistic uh, Ewoks that would try to eat them that worship Darth Vader's uh, that like worship Darth Vader's helmet or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did get something right. Uh, Darth Vader's helmet involved. was involved in the in the sequel trilogy, but not that way. Yeah, or uh, no, I think I don't know if it was the helmet or they were worshiping Palpatine. They were like Palpatine's personal little army. Go, my Ewoks, destroy them. (laughs) 
Okay, well, there you have it, everybody. Pipe smoking fictional characters throughout uh, various IPs that you just don't, they just don't want you to know about. That's right. They, things from places that, you know, you probably won't see any, won't see anymore. <laughs> or very rarely. But anyway, with that, we'll we'll leave it there. And as always, you can always keep up with us throughout the week. I'm on Twitter at Doctor Alien Two Hundred One, and the show is at Syndicated Pipe. Greg, where can the people find you? You can find me in my ridiculous, silly little name on uh, Twitter uh, at uh, the underscore Badger Piper. I'm also on Instagram at the Badger Piper. And uh, you always comment on our videos. Uh, send us a send us an email at reverseflashtime at gmail dot com. Like, subscribe, do all the stuff, do all the things. And if you're listening on the podcast, please go to wherever you happen to be listening to and give us a five star rating on iTunes or well, whatever they whatever whatever Apple calls their thing now, Apple, Apple Podcasts. Podcasts. Yeah, give yes, us a five star uh, rating so we can. Uh, be more discoverable. At least that's I have my understanding of how that works. Yes, uh, give us a five star review. Steal your spouse's phone. Give us a five star review on their phone. Uh, take your parents' iPhone because uh, they probably want you to update something on their phone anyway. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Just, uh, while you're there, just, just, just throw it. Throw us a five star. Start five star rating. Yes, uh, tell the tell everyone how great of a podcast we are how much you learn from us, uh, how much you enjoy us and uh, have fun listening to us and uh, spread the word. And if it's not true, do it anyway. We're, we're not going to fault you. That's right. You know, like it's, it's justified. The ends justify the means. So with that all being said, have good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Chat with you later.